on, people. Ross out out here in Singapore. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'm so excited to be here on the Night Owl podcast. You guys, as always, trying to draw inspiration from the world around me and enjoying every damn minute of it, really. Um, so many things going on at the moment, and I'm trying this new thing where I'm really, really being focused on being present in the moment. A lot of times we're going to meet people or do things and what we tend to do, unfortunately, is be somewhere with somebody and be thinking about something else, right? So we're not actually in the moment, we're not actually enjoying the people that we have around us. And the quote that I want to talk about today is actually um, an essay that somebody wrote in high school for an English paper and I thought it was really, really poignant because I forget how important life is. I forget how, you know, just crucial it is to be around the people that you're physically in front of not not just to physically be with them but just to to be like mind body soul like really be in the moment use all your five senses and just be there for that moment um i think i've talked about this before where um usually when children come and bug you like they want your attention they don't want it all day max because they have a shortest attention span max they want it like 10 15 minutes so if you can't put aside 10 15 minutes you got to think about what it is that you're doing in your life that is restricting you so much. So this is what I'm saying. I think being present in the moment, being uh, in front of people, um, just mentally and emotionally checking in and really spending quality time with somebody is very, very important throughout the the course of your life because guess what? Once you spend the time, it doesn't come back. You're not going to get that time back ever again, right? So this is why it's so much more crucial. But let me go ahead and read this real quick because I think... I think it'll give you a little bit more context, yeah? So this young lady wrote for her English class. She said, this I believe. Um, And she said, a lot can happen in one minute. 60 little seconds. One September 18th, 2016 at 1.31 p.m., I tapped out a text that said, I'm really going to miss you. And at 1.32... I was upside down, suspended by my seatbelt in a ditch, dialing 911. In the days following, I tried to process the events that seemed to be on a constant loop in my mind. It's funny when you come out of something like that. All the nice things people have to say to you. People have say things that they normally wouldn't. They suddenly value you more than normal. They suddenly forgive you for everything because whatever they were mad at you for becomes insignificant in comparison to the thought of losing you. So my question is, if life can be gone so quickly and so unexpectedly, why don't we say those things before we might not have the chance to? It can be hard to live in such an extreme way. A lot of people might not know how to respond, but there are certain times when it's better to say too much than not enough. Because really, what's the harm? Even if you're hurt or embarrassed, it lasts, never lasts forever. That's the beauty of time. Eventually, things fade. Why wouldn't you say too much? And while you're at it, love too hard. I don't think it's possible to love someone or something halfway. Either you do or you don't. And honestly, I, I got to agree with her. Either you're pregnant or you're not pregnant. You're not kind of pregnant, right? It's one or the other. So here we go. She says... So if you do give it everything, at least if it fails, you'll know you laid it all out there. Pride gets in the way of a lot of potentially beautiful moments. And after a while, all the things that you don't say start to pile up. And then you're left with a heavy heart and all kinds of regret, all because you wanted to stay safe. I've gone into relationships where I knew heartbreak was practically a guarantee and I went for it anyway, just on the off chance that I might find something rare. I'm an endlessly hopeful person in that way, and I ended up getting hurt. I'm still here, and I'm a better person because of it. And you can't let hurt change you as hard as it may try. Stay vulnerable, stay kind, stay understanding, and stay gentle. We are a result of the experience life hands us and how we react to those experiences. If all of your experiences have been somewhere in that halfway range, what kind of person does that make you? Of course, not every day can be extraordinary, but that isn't a realistic that isn't realistic when you factor in all the responsibilities and obligations when we have to keep up with. And honestly, for me, some th- sometimes living life to the fullest means going back to bed. But we can all do ourselves a small favor by saying what we need to say and then saying it a little bit more. I couldn't agree more, honestly. Like, so many things that we are afraid will upset the other person. Uh, things that they say, you know what, I don't like this, or I am offended by this. And obviously, you don't want to do something intentionally to hurt the other person. But if it's on your heart to say it, then say it. Get it off your chest. And I do like that idea of, you know, the more things you keep to yourself, the more things pile up, and suddenly it feels like a heavy heart because it's full of all the things you were wanting to say and wanting to do like I can't tell you how many situations I've been in where I'm standing before the person in front of me and I'm thinking you know I would really love to hug you but I'm not sure if you would receive that well I would really love to reach out and touch your arm and show you that I really am here physically you know here caring for you in this moment remind you hey I'm here and I'm worried that you know maybe they don't like physical touch and rather than risk them saying hey don't touch me because that feels like rejection right I'd rather not say anything at all but I'm being less of myself then. I'm not being the kind of person that I know that I am. I am being dishonest to myself. 
And that's something that I really had to learn how to stop doing. And even then, like sometimes now even, I still find myself holding back and not doing as much as I would want to because I've been told I'm overwhelming before. Like all of my past experiences come flooding back to my memory telling me, hey, this didn't work the last time, but I need to remind myself, hey, this is not the same person as last time either. So I need to give it a shot. So honestly, bottom line from this whole idea is that it's funny how fleeting life is nothing is permanent everything is constantly changing which also means that once the moment's gone the moment's gone you're not going to get it back so while you have the moment shoot your shot do the best you can obviously if the other person doesn't respond so well at least you know you tried there's nothing worse than what if nothing worse than what if because then you spend a lot of your time wishing that you'd had the chance again, wondering if the opportunity might pop up again. And guess what? I've been in situations where I was wishing the opportunity to pop up, it did pop up, and again, I stalled. I froze. I just kind of didn't know what to do with myself, and I kind of like, nope, better not put myself out there, because what if they don't like it? So, I'm telling you right now, I would rather argue with you about something that matters, and then know that, okay, whether I was wrong or right, you were able to entertain my side of the conversation without trying to convince me I was wrong, without trying to, you know, put me down or judge me for what I was saying and show me that you respect my friendship enough to not be worried if we don't agree on something because it's inevitable, right? Um, I would love to have the kinds of friends around me that they're not afraid to tell me, you know what, you're an idiot. What the hell are you doing right now? Whether they're younger or older than me, it's not a, about respect about, you know, you shouldn't speak that way to your elders or nothing like that. It's more like, I love you so much and I want you to be so happy that if I see you doing something stupid, I'm going to tell you. And then it's up to you whether you do something about it or not. Um, I've been raised in such a way where I was told not to... Um, offer advice or offer help unless somebody came and asked for it but honestly there have been so many times in my life where I've seen physically see with proof that someone is struggling and I feel compelled to go and ask them if they want help at least offer say that I noticed that you know you're struggling would you like some help and then let them say yes or no at that point you know and I know in the flip side of things that when I've been in situations where I didn't think anyone could see me I didn't think anyone cared I was borderline you know just ready to call it quits on everything kind of just mentally check out and be the vegetable that they want me to be you know just to you know lemming my way through life and it was a random stranger that said hey you know what how are you or I like your dress and it immediately picked up my mood it immediately reminded me hey there are people that do notice and it saved my life on more than one occasion um and so I really think it's important that we take the time to physically be present wherever we are as hard as it may be, as many troubles as you may have on your mind, um, worries about the future, uh, concern about the past repeating itself, any of those anxiety-driven thoughts, those depressive um, concerns, the things that make you feel weak and hopeless and just, you know, irrelevant, all of those things matter, I know. But if you could find yourself losing your senses in the moment every so often, it becomes more and more easy to just be present, to not sweat those things that you really have no control over. Because let's face it, things that have been, uh, that occurred in the past, they're done, they're gone. They can't happen again. I mean, they could happen again in a different situation, but you can't change that now. It's done, it's finished. That moment has gone. You can't affect the outcome of that ever again. You can't go back through and think about, you know, the best quip that you could have come back with, those witty statements that you could have clapped back with, you could have said something different, done something different so that things didn't end up the way that they, you, you can't. That's the harsh reality of it. You can't. So you, all you have is this moment. You have the possibility of creating something different, starting here and ending somewhere, you know, you never expected. Um, And I know you're worried about, you know, the past repeating itself. So you're going to play out every scenario possible about, you know, how your decision is going to affect the lives around you, how they might be received, how might people perceive you. But what is the point in thinking of all those things while you could be doing? It's almost like, okay, I'm going to watch Netflix to see how people deal with relationships. But at some point, I'm going to have to step out into a relationship and deal with it on my own as much as I could give you tons and tons of advice it doesn't matter if I'm not going to take my own advice if I'm not going to put it in practice myself does that make sense so as sobering as that letter was it was an essay letter I don't know what to call it as sobering as that essay was I want you guys to take away the fact that life is short and if you have it on your heart to say something say it 
because that moment doesn't come back again. And rather than live a life full of regrets, a life full of what ifs, a life full of, oh my gosh, I wish I had said something when I had the chance, because we don't know when we'll see that other person again. We don't know if they leave the house, if they're going to come back, it's not guaranteed. And to live a life with those kinds of concerns in mind kind of forces you to step up to the plate and take a swing every chance you get, every chance you get, not just when you feel comfortable, every chance you get. And that is also another reflection of the integrity that you have in yourself, right? Uh, They say things like, you know what? Integrity is you doing what you say you're going to do, even when the mood has passed to do it. Yes, I get it. But on the flip side of that as well, you are who you are every single chance you get to be yourself, whether it's in front of an audience or not in front of an audience. If you are a caring, loving person, be a caring, loving person. If you are the kind of person that if you notice trash on the street, you're going to stop and pick up trash on the street. Hey, do that. Don't change for anybody. And I get it. Some days you won't have the time, but do that as often as you can. Be true to yourself as often as you can. And that to me is a successful life. So I hope you understand what I'm getting at here. I hope this helped a little bit. If you have any questions or concerns, as always, drop them in the comments. I'm here to listen. I'm excited to, you know, have a conversation with you guys. But in the meantime, think about it. If you want to say something, say it. Let the chips fall where they may. Take the chance. Be vulnerable. Because that's the best way to test and see who actually really wants to be around and who doesn't. There's no point in catering or padding. uh, What is it? padding, panning, pandering to the crowd, there's no point in doing that because you're not being authentic to yourself. And once you are authentic, the people that really appreciate those things, they will gravitate towards you. And if they don't, at least you know. And that's worth it. It really is worth it. All right, you guys, I love you and I will catch you again soon. Bye.